Hi my little rays, it's Ray from Ray Rose Studios, and today we're covering part two to the Am I the Jerk compilation I did a couple of months ago, or maybe a year ago, I'm not sure. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, please go check out that video. I'll have a link for it down below. But with that out of the way, let's get into the video. My idiot daughter went out drinking after passing her college exams, so I blew up at her and made her cry. I have a daughter named Jen. When she was growing up I worked a lot and missed out on all of her school events, sports games and plays. I also had a stressful job which I hated and anger issues back then. And we're starting off bad because now you're gonna try to blame your job on the reason you're a jerk. Amazing. So Jen and I were rocky for the first 18 years. I remember smashing her nail polish once after coming home from work as the smell of it made me sick and she was doing it in the living room. Anyway, Jen went out of state for college and never spoke to me, not even if I offered to pay for books or rent or anything. Probably because you're the type of parent to linger the fact that they use their money over their child's head. When she visited for holidays, she stayed with my ex-wife and her new husband. Jen came back to our city for work last year and started law school last month, therefore she moved into mine. She pays for her own groceries and utilities. I don't need the money from her but she insisted. She is cordial with me but we don't interact like father and daughter should. You're surprised? You're shocked? We're like strained roommates. Some issues we have are, Jen wears sweatpants and shirts to school. I nicely offered to take her shopping for some smart suits, skirts, blouses, etc. so she can fit in with the law school types. She said no and continues to dress like a slob every day for class. I don't know much about lawyers, but I'm pretty sure you can't wear sweatpants to court. Yeah, OP, I think you're right. I think lawyers don't wear sweatpants to work. Good thing she's not at work. And really, calling your daughter a slob because she's wearing sweatpants to college? Just from how OP sounds, we all know he's the type of guy to show up to college in his pajama pants. I noticed Jen makes herself an omelet every day so I started making omelets for her before she gets up so she doesn't need to burden herself, but she says she doesn't like my omelets and asks me to stop cooking for her as I always burn them, which I think is nonsense. They're not burnt, they're just a little crispy. Oh good lord, he's one of those people. It's not burnt, it's just a little crispy. Proceeds to hand me a charcoal block that used to be a patty. Jen comes home after 8pm every single day. She tells me she is studying at school or going to the gym but now that the days are getting darker she needs to be home earlier because I worry about her getting into an accident or being roped, and she can't defend herself as she's only a little petite cute. Harmless woman. I know you guys can't see it, but I'm cringing so far back into my seat, it's not even funny. So last Friday she came home at 9pm when it was pitch black and said she was at the bar with some classmates. I got no text from her, no call no nothing, and she wasn't even studying. As soon as she came in through the door, I started going off on her about how irresponsible she is and how she could have gotten hurt by doing such stupid things like going out drinking. I honestly tried getting through to her hollow head about my concerns but she yelled at me that she's allowed to socialize with her peers after midterm exams. Your daughter's completely right, OP. She's an adult. Even if she wasn't an exam, she has every right to go out and drink. You may be her dad, but she's not a child. You have no say-so in the matter. I understand this, but school comes first, not drinks, and she should have let me know what she was doing. She ended up just going to her room for the night and crying. We didn't speak all weekend, and she continues to come home after dark every night. I'm very concerned for my daughter, and I'm worried law school may be too hard for her as she was never the brightest. However, I don't want to have another blow up with her like we did on Friday. Not the brightest? Gee, look at the pot calling the kettle black, OP. Like you have any right to be saying who's the brightest bulb in the light box when you can't even comprehend the fact that you don't own your 20-year-old daughter. Let's get on with the next one, shall we? I'm a stupid jealous housewife that couldn't get over the fact that my husband had a better wife for his kids so I destroyed their sentimental belongings because I'm a beach. Wow, um, very blunt wasn't expecting that, but go on. So I have been keeping this secret for a couple of months. I have been with my fiancé Ale for two years but I've known him since I was a freshman in high school and he was a sophomore. He was with his deceased ex-wife Lorraine when they were in middle school. I always kind of had feelings for Ale, even when I was in a relationship with my ex-boyfriend from high school, we broke up of course. But Ale has two kids Basil and Bertie, F kinda names are those? I love those kids as my own and see them as my own. He was married to his deceased ex-wife Lorraine when she was 18 and he was 19. Had a son after they got married. Sadly Lorraine passed away from childbirth with their daughter Bertie, she gave birth in 1793 how does that happen? Listen here bub this is my channel I do the commentating here. I comforted him when he was grieving. After a year of her passing we got into a relationship. He's the best partner I can ever ask for and we are getting married in the summer of July. Bertie sees me as her mother and Basil sees me more as an aunt than a mom. 
I was always Annie Coco but my name is Celia. Basil does have a picture of Ale and him and Lorraine when she was five months pregnant with Bertie. He does not have a picture of us together as a family. He still misses his mom. I was kind of a little jealous of Lorraine. Especially during high school. Sometimes I wish I was the birth mother of Basil and Bertie. Wow, okay, you definitely need therapy for that. You A, should not be jealous of a dead person. And B, well there is no B, but A should be a good enough reason to stop it. I wished I had his kids first and Ale doesn't want any more kids biologically. Because he told me he only wanted Lorraine to have his kids. He had a vasectomy, laughing ass off bro cut himself. Okay, if we're going to do this commentary thing together here, you're going to have to watch your language. This is a PG channel here. Let's keep it PG, please. He told me he would rather just adopt, or use a sperm donor which makes me upset. I felt so insecure about all of it. Thinking Lorraine is in the way. All of Ale's friends knew Lorraine in and out. Since they all knew each other in middle school and had the same old friend group growing up all together. Especially Ale's best friend Jordan. He adored Lorraine. So did his wife Ruth, who is Lorraine's best friend, I know them but I am not close to them. They all talk about Lorraine from time to time. About the things they used to do. They are the godparents of Basil and Bertie. So they're around a lot. And I bet a pretty penny that you just hate that they're around this much. I however didn't know Lorraine that much, but she was nice to me. It felt fake though. I bet, so I wasn't really a big fan of hers. But respected her enough. I felt like I was intruding in Ale's beautiful family. I remember going through the attic and finding some of Lorraine's and Ale's belongings. With photos from middle school to before her passing. Also with Ale's old gifts that Lorraine gave him to Lorraine's gifts from Ale have given her. A lot of horses as Lorraine grew up on a horse ranch and loved horses. Ale was keeping this for his kids to give when they were older. To treasure their mother's stuff. I also found another box filled with Lorraine's collection of old vintage and antique stuff of horses and gifts from her friends, Ale's friends, and family, and Ale's family. I got jealous as Ale was planning on giving this stuff of Lorraine's horse collection and gifts to Bertie. Ale has already given Bertie Lorraine's old stuffed zebra when she was a young child and given Basil an old knife that belonged to Lorraine's grandfather. And this is an issue why? All I know is, I wanted everything gone. Again? Why? When Elle took Basil and Bertie to Lorraine's parents' house for a few days. I stayed back because of work. I knew this was an opportunity to get rid of Lorraine's stuff and photos. So I took the knife and the stuffed zebra, all the photos of Lorraine in it and her antique horse collection. Burned all the photos, threw her antique collection away and destroyed some. Cut open all the stuffed toys of Lorraine's and letters she wrote. Destroyed every single thing of hers. I felt. Satisfied knowing she won't be a bother and nothing to be jealous of anymore. Woman, first of all, she didn't have to be a reason you were jealous to begin with. And really, you're proud of yourself? You're proud that you destroyed priceless things to your husband and children? That you just oh so love, but then destroy the one things they do love? I felt happy and not remorseful what the f is wrong with this bitch why would you do that when ale and the kids came back i pretended as if nothing happened and was just normal it only took a few days when they noticed especially basil he couldn't find his photo of him and his mother or the knife he raised awareness of the disappearance of the stuff which got ale searching for the zebra but couldn't have been found we moved to a new house a few months after ale searched through the attic to pack stuff and noticed that only lorraine's stuff was all gone her collection childhood stuff their pictures together letters gifts just everything he searched frantically for it he did question me as he knew about my insecurities and jealousy of Lorraine. But I told him that I would never do anything like that. He believed me. Thinking he left her stuff back at the old house. Even to this day he still doesn't know. Ale is stupid, Basil is however heartbroken which made me feel a bit sad. Lorraine's parents and friends are very sad about it. As Ale did tell his friends and everyone. His family is sad about it. Because they loved Lorraine like a daughter. I wish they loved me like one. Well, OP, if your main goal was to get them to like you like a daughter, then you've surely lost your chances with this action right here. But I know I can't ever compare to her. Ale's friends are also so sad about what happened. Everyone is sad. But they don't know a thing. Even Bertie is sad about the zebra. But that thing was old and gross. So I got her a new one. She doesn't love it like her old one but she sleeps with it once in a while. I don't think I can ever tell Ale or anyone this. But it feels good to take it off my chest. You need only person I really told was my two best friends Mandy and Holly. Mandy knows Ale but in high school they really weren't that close. But still hung out and Holly didn't really like Ale that much, she only knows him because she dated his friend Maxwell in high school too. College on and off. Until Maxwell got married with a kid on the way. However Mandy and Holly have told me what I did wasn't right. But they won't tell anyone. This is such a predicament. On one hand they told you that you're wrong but on the other hand they're gonna keep it a secret. I don't know how to feel about your friends. I'm going to put them in the maybe category for hating them. Just simply for the fact that they at least told you off. 
so I feel safe knowing they won't tell Ale or any one of his friends and family. I hope he finds out and leaves your ass. Now I couldn't save the update to my phone, so we'll have to move on. But besides that, I've never met a more disgusting and vile person in my life. How dare you, OP? How dare you pretend to like and love these children as if they're your own, but then simultaneously go around and destroy the one things that they love, that they cared for? All because what? You couldn't handle the fact that your husband loved someone before you? Because your children had a mom that was not you? You're despicable, OP. I can't even find the proper words to use for you. And just like the person commentating said, I hope he does find out and leaves you on the side of the curb. Let's get on to the next video, shall we? My son's babysitter keeps feeding him snacks even though I told her no. My son has a babysitter that picks him up from school every day, takes him to soccer, tutoring, swimming, etc. then takes him home and does homework until we get home. We were grocery shopping and my son picked up a box of Capri Sun and asked if he could have it because it was his favorite. I asked him where he was getting it from and he said his babysitter has bins full of snacks in her car and he gets to pick out whatever he wants when she picks him up from school or- Okay, Opie hasn't even said it yet and I already know he's gonna have a problem with it so I'm just going to ask now. What's wrong with Capri Suns? They're the healthiest juice besides apple juice and orange juice. And I'm no scientist or athlete analyst, but I'm pretty sure that after doing anything running or kicking related, you need to eat something a little bit fattier than- Oh, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Just let OP tell you what the list of snacks are. Practice. I had him point out whatever else his babysitter was giving him and it was almost all processed. She's been giving him chocolate granola bars, fruit snacks, bags of chips, goldfish, and applesauce. Yep, you heard it here, folks. OP is upset because her babysitter is feeding her son Capri Suns, goldfish, chips, and freaking applesauce. Apple gosh darn sauce. Apples. Apples. Mashed up apples. I texted the babysitter and asked her about this and she said that my son is always hungry after school and practice and this is easier than stopping to buy him a snack. I told her I don't want her to give him her snacks anymore and she said she'd be happy to do that if I pack an after school snack and send it to school with him because she doesn't have the time to take him home and grab him a snack before his activities. I told her it would only be a couple hours and she can just have him wait until they get home but she said she will not be working with a hangry 5 year old for 2 to 4 hours so I could pack a snack, she could give him a snack. Or she could quit. You know what, OP's babysitter? You are very reasonable because if I had to work with someone like that who acts like that when I'm working for them and providing their child with free food so they don't have to, oh, there would only be one or two options. Option A, apologize, or option B, I quit. I told my husband about this and he said it's fine and it's not like he eats much better at our house. He gets a lot of these things as an occasional treat and that none of what she gives him is that bad. I told him I expect more for how much we pay her, she gets $25 an hour, but he still says she's doing nothing wrong. He even texted the babysitter saying to ignore me, she's doing fine, and to send him the receipts for the snack so he could reimburse her. W father, W, he's amazing. Not only telling you to stop being entitled and rude, but also willing to reimburse her for the free food. I just don't understand how jerks like OP can find men like OP's husband. I just don't know how they find them. Am I the a-hole for not wanting her to feed my son every day? Yes. Well, that's the end of my video, guys. I hope you liked hearing me rant about jerks online. If you liked this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe for more and be on the lookout for my newest story time video, which I'm writing the script for as we speak. But as always, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye!